Nice to see you <laughs> for the third time. I'm glad we are like packing full. Um, I'm Anfa. You probably know me if you if you've been here before, because I'm presenting for the third time. Um, if you don't know me, I make electronic music with Linux and open source software. I also make videos aiming to share my knowledge, experience, and passion with the community. Mm, tell about the tools I know and I use and how you can use it effectively, them. Uh, I'm growing on YouTube and on Patreon, and etc. Uh, yeah, these numbers were, were much smaller two, time, two years ago and even one year ago. So I guess that's fun, whatever. But this talk, uh, this talk is about Vital, which is a new synthesizer that's not yet published. Mm, do you recognize this synthesizer? Please raise your hands. Like 80% seems to want to. So this is Helm, of course, if you don't know. Uh, Helm is, I think it's one of the better known open source synthesizers in the world. And I think what contributed to, to that a lot is that it looks really good. And it, it, the look of it gets you inspired, and also it shows you what's happening. If you, you know, you can drag these automation uh, helms and attach them to different things, and it all starts moving, and it's exciting, and you understand what the synthesizer is doing, which is not as easy as you might think it is. Like, many synthesizers, fail to communicate what they are doing uh, very well. But mm, Matt decided to make a new synthesizer. And this is his first blog post in February two 2018. And I read that and I was like, ah, oh, that sounds cool. And <laughs> create the most popular synthesizer in the world, that's his goal. Well, I, I, I think he's pretty close in achieving that, uh, knowing what the synth is like right now. Um, so I read that, and later he also, um, on his GitHub, I was you know, just mm, asking for some features for Helm or, or checking some bugs, and he mentioned that synth, that, oh yeah, that feature is going to be in the new synth I'm making. So I was like, hell, I want to know more. So I emailed him, hey Matt, I wonder if you'd like to tell me something more about your new synthesizer. I've read on GitHub that you're working on it, and I'm very excited to find out more. And he actually... Let me just try it. And he sent me the binary, and I, and I opened it up. And I actually wondered if I should play you the video I recorded for him when I first used the synthesizers, because it was like, <laughs> I was so excited. because, And I'm still very excited, because um, I'm going to show it to you today. And <laughs> it's like the best thing uh, that has ever been created in the open source audio, I think. So, mm, as you might see, Matt on his first blog post says that this new synthesizer will be open source and pay what you want, just like Helm. Uh, he didn't make a, like a, an official announcement about this, since uh, the, the, the synthesizer was named Vital, and since he created a Vital website, because he's kind of like keeping people in the dark and like making people wonder what's going to be, so to probably just to build ex excitement and appreciation. Not appreciation, apprehension, whatever. Words are hard. And I'd like to play you a completely unrelated video clip. Just, just totally, completely unrelated. Oh wait, we have no audio. Let me do a test run then. 
the feedback has okay how is that not playing sound okay let's use vlc then this part was supposed to be smooth and seamless so okay it works i think mpv just decided to screw me over so now let's have a look at doing the same thing inside of a very well-known and very modern digital sounding synth, Serum. Now, this is Steve Duda's masterpiece, if you ask me. It's just, it's become almost vital for all producers to have this installed. Almost vital, almost vital, almost vital. <laughs> Building up the hype. <laughs> yeah, so that's just jokes aside. Uh, well, they they um, they could have not known what this is gonna be. Uh, so this is, was an excerpt from a video, totally unrelated video, uh, when where James Wiltshire was showing how you can make analog sounding sounds with digital synthesizers, and I just thought that line was very funny in this context. Uh, <laughs> oh yes, please. Absolutely. So, I want to introduce Vital. It's a modern wavetable synthesizer. If you've heard about Serum, uh, it's, um, it's similar. Uh, people who used Serum and used Vital in the beta testing, um, they said they, some, some of them said that some parts of Vital are actually better than in Serum. And, um, well, that's quite a testimony, because <laughs> Serum is, it indeed is the industry standard. So Matt Tittle, the maker of Helm, he's making it for Linux, Mac, and Windows. It's working in standalone LV2, VST, and AU plugins. On the website, it's announced to come in 2020. I don't know if it's going to be January or December, but I don't care. I'm super hyped anyway. And I know, and I can tell you, it will be released as free software but it's kind of secret, so hush. Now, this is not just any presentation. Um, only a small group of people who are better testing this synth has actually seen the whole interface. The rest of the world only saw some little, little pieces that Matt has decided to publish. Um, and this is an exclusive world premiere, so get excited. And I wasn't even sure if I will be able to give this talk, uh, for a long time, I was like hanging um, on the verge, and I didn't want to if I if I will be able to present on Vital or not. So I was researching other topics, but finally Matt agreed to for me to make this presentation under under one condition, and that is to make absolutely sure that you understand that this is not finished yet. Uh, there are some things that are rough, uh, some features might be missing, so this is by no means the final look or functionality of Vital, but it's, even despite that, it's perfectly usable already. So it's time for the big reveal. <laughs> and I'm going to do this by cloning my screen. Mm. Wow, it's, it's amazing how the simplest things become so difficult when you're doing this live. This is vital! <laughs> developers, developers, developers! Developers, developers, developers! No, oh, sorry. I just... I don't know what that was. So, as you can see, we have two wavetable oscillators. Uh, we have a sub-oscillator, which is providing us with some simpler wave forms. Uh, usually you just use this with a sine wave to give yourself some more bass. Uh, we have a sampler, which um, usually is used as a noise source. Mm, I wasn't sure if this is a good idea. I was like, actually I was in <laughs> involved in the, in the development process because when I saw that first uh, post and I, and I asked Matt, I was constantly back and forth and testing his progress and giving him ideas and my feedback. And 
I'm really glad because many of the ideas we share like and, ex and discuss together are implemented, and this is just very exciting. So I wasn't sure if, if sampler is a good idea, but I think it's a very good idea because it's a very flexible. You can, you can use this just as a noise source, and with the long enough sample, and there's an option to shuffle, so every time you press a note, it starts at a different part, so you don't have this machine gun effect where if I disable the oscillator and just press <laughs> now we have sub oscillator this sounds repeated this doesn't so it perfectly suits the, the need for, us, uh, for a noise generator but it can do much more you can just drag and drop any audio file here and play it and you can tune it to the note pitch and use it as a just a musical sampler. Of course, this is pretty limited for a musical sampler. We don't have loop regions, etc. But it's just an addendum to this whole synth. So, uh, ex after the oscillators, this, the, song, the sound sources, we have two filters, which you can route signal into uh, with these buttons there. Uh, you can, like by default, Oscillator 1 feeds sound to filter 1, and oscillator 2 feeds sound to filter 2. But you can swap it around. If you disable some source on both filters, uh, it just goes through unaffected. So, for example, if I have just one filter, oscillator 1. And if I disable the filter, now the filter is still there, but the, the signal from the oscillator goes through unaffected. But I can also route the same signal to two filters. And now I can set them differently. And they are mixing, and because filters impose phase offsets, uh, phase distortions, we can get some nice, really funky effects. So. First, I want to give you a rough overview. Maybe we'll go into detail about the oscillators, the filters. Uh, so on the right side, we have the envelopes. There are six envelopes total, but only after you assign four of them, the, the rest uh, shows up to not just clutter the UI too much. And also, there's, there are eight envelopes, uh, sorry, eight LFO uh, units, which also, like when you assign the fourth one, the fifth one appears, sixth, seventh, and the eighth. And eighth. And below that, we have lots of modulation sources. Uh, we have note pitch, which is like you know the, the MIDI note from 0 to 127, but on the scale from 0 to 1. The note velocity, aftertouch, I don't know what this is even. This is the opposite of velocity. It's the speed when you at which you lift your key. So you can have different release times, for example. Uh, Excuse me? I don't know. I tested this, but I wasn't, a, I wasn't able to figure out what it does. Because you have portamento here. It's the glide function. And you can set up uh, it to always glide. Let's, let's demonstrate that. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. I got to ask Matt for that. <laughs> So we have glide, if I enable it. We can also make it always glide, so it will... By default, it only enables the glide when you overlap two notes. Okay, so uh, we also have four macros. Uh, you can assign this to anything, and then you have a single knob that you can just move or automate. Um, I've done quite a, some work with uh, actually music with the synthesizer over the past year, and I just automate the macros. I don't use any other things because you can automate all the things, but it gets, you know, the list of parameters is very long, so I just use the macros. Uh, it also helps me fix uh, things when uh, a new version comes out and the, o the order of the parameters is changed. Anyway, you're not going to have to worry about that because um, it's going to be cemented when, when the synth is released. So with macros, we can, for example, we can drag a macro to the filter cutoff, and now I move the 
macronobe and it modulates the filter cutoff. I can change the amount by dragging this, this point here. But I can assign this macro to some other things. For example, maybe the type of the filter. So it goes from low pass to band pass to high pass as it changes the frequency. Or we can reverse that. So I can make it go the opposite direction. Doesn't sound as cool, though. <laughs> All righty. We have also some extra modulation sources. Uh, there's the mod wheel, of course, the pitch wheel, and there's random, which gives you a random value for every note. Um, I use this mostly when I make some pad instruments, and I want, for example, each note in a chord to have a different setting for the filter or the wavetable, which we're going to get into. There's also a source called Peril in the Noise, which is like wiggly stuff and stereo. <laughs> and there is stereo modulation, because a very weird thing, but very cool thing about this synth is that the whole signal path right from the oscillators is completely stereo. In most synthesizers, you have a mono signal path, and then at some point it gets split, usually at the, at the effects or maybe in some mixer unit. And if you recall, maybe, Helm was also completely mono. <laughs> you didn't really have any stereo options unless you did a hack with multiple instances in Ardor and yeah, I shown that in one video. So maybe you Yeah. <laughs> what why do you need stereo? Oh, it's also it's also going stereo. Oh, then that's good. But not many sims do that. And the weird thing is you can just use this stereo source to, for example, modulate the pitch. And this goes like... Let me disable the filter. Yeah, that's very surreal. But basically, we can dif change different parameters between left and right channel with this source which is very cool because you can use it, well, on this pitch it's really obnoxious and bad, but if we use it on the filter, it gets interesting and we can create very, very interesting ways to define the stereo field of our sound. It's gonna be hard to hear on the speakers, probably, because it's not as pronounced. We can also automate this with, or modulate this with an LFO, um, and such other things. Okay, so what else do we have? We have a keyboard. We can click on it with the mouse, or it shows the notes I play. Usual stuff. Uh, we have the voices switch. By, by default, it's eight voices. For bass lines and drums, I usually drop, drop this to one voice, so it's monophonic. Oh, that's a great. I love that. We can also change the bend, uh, pitch bend wheel uh, range. By default, it's two semitones, so one whole tone. And you can go up to 48, <laughs> which is four octaves. I believe this is four octaves up and down, so you can actually span eight octaves. So this is like pretty much the whole audible range of human hearing. I don't know if we need that, but we can have it. And there is also velocity tracking. By default, uh, Vital does not use the velocity, so I can hit it very slightly or very hard. It makes no difference. So we need to enable the velocity tracking. Now I can actually play softly. So usually it makes things quieter, so we need to compensate to make our dynamic range higher. Still not that high. And here we have this place for the pitch band and mod wheel. Now this makes sense when you connect a keyboard that has more than just this. That there's no, uh, oh no, 
I think I disconnected my MIDI keyboard, of course. Is that what you do? Now, that was a mistake. <laughs> You'd never think this thing would break, but it does. Okay. All right, so that's pretty much the main interface. Uh, there are some other things like settings for the glide option. We can also bend the glide uh, function. And there's legato, which makes the envelopes continue throughout notes that overlap. So if we make a very long decay, uh, I just took, have to enable this now. Dubias, question. Yes. Can you use the velocity to track or to to modify any any other parameters? So yes, for absolutely. example, it turns soft when you hit it softly and more aggressive when you hit it harder. Yes, uh, with this velocity modulation source here. Uh, this only affects the volume of the of the synth. Um, uh, amplitude modulation probably like how velocity uh, affects the the loudness of the sound but also we have velocity modulation source here so we can make the filter for example respond to node velocity <laughs> or we can have the velocity change how much of an envelope we have applied so now i apply an envelope let's give it a this decay and now i can go to the modulation matrix, which shows f we have 32 slots to assign different things. And when you drag stuff, like you know, drag the macro to, to LFO frequency, it creates a new entry. Uh, we could like, create all the, all the assignments manually here, but it's tedious, so dragging is way easier and faster. I can also right click to disconnect it from from different things, and we have removed the thing, the, the uh, modulation assignments. And I can, for example, use the node velocity to modulate the amount of other modulations. So now, if I play softly, the envelope has minimal effect on the filter, but if I play loud, it has a lot of effect on the filter. Yeah, if you also if you move your mouse over something, it, it highlights what is modulated. So I'm now m hovering my mouse over the, the, the filter cutoff and it highlights the envelope too because that one is is modulating it. So it's it's very helpful to figure out what's affecting the, this parameter. And I can also change the range, but yeah. Now changing this range doesn't even have effect because What's controlling the amount of change is this. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> it's weird because you can have like, you know, uh, higher notes be more stereo or have more reverb because uh, despite, uh, uh, because apart from the modulation matrix, we also have effects and we have a rack of things we can do. We can have a chorus. And we can have a compressor, which is uh, highly inspired by the OTT compressor, which is a very well-known amongst uh, electronic music producers and overused. <laughs> it's, it produces very loud and intense sounds. It's a free band m uh, compressor, uh, but it compresses in two stages. In one stage, it um, turns down <laughs> the things that are too loud, uh, but in the other stage, it turns up things that are too quiet. And with this interface, you can drag up and down on these parts to change the ratio of the compression. So now I'm making the peaks compressed more. <laughs> So nothing gets through, 
But with this, if I drag it up, I also make the quiet stuff being turned up a lot. So it's very, very squashed. You can also have attack and release. Now it sounds like you're recording it in a bathroom or in your toilet. Perfect. That's what just what we want. There's also a delay unit. Uh, no, right now the effects uh, are like a separate chain. Uh, everything that happens here at, in this stage, oscillators and filters gets mixed down to stereo, and that is sent to the effect rack. So it's like a single rack. You, you can't split signals right now in there. Uh, the filter, the sorry, the delay is pretty fun because it has a bandpass filter. So our delay voices are more and more band passed, which is cool. And we can also modulate this with an LFO, for example. The cool thing is also if we uh, change the type of uh, uh, of how we determine time. By default, all the time syncing uh, options, like you know the LFOs, they are all synced to musical time, which is relative to the beats per second information that Vital gets from a host if you run it as a plugin, or from Jack if you run it as a standalone. But you can change that to something completely independent, like seconds. And now we have a quarter second. I'm going to disable this. And because, because delay is what it is, we can do some really funky stuff. By modulating the time. <laughs> we can even actually scratch the whole thing if we set the feedback to zero. Mm. I'm going to enter a value of zero to make sure it's not anything else. Make the mix all the way right so it's 100% wet. There's no original signal at all. And I'm playing, and it can, it's like scratching a vinyl tape. Vinyl record, sorry. Vinyl tape, my god, that's an abomination. <laughs> vinyl tape! Oh, no. <laughs> I want vinyl tape. Give me vinyl tape! I, I, I think I know what the next t-shirt is going to be. Vinyl tape! I think I even have an idea for the design. It's like a compact cassette with two vinyl records inside. <laughs> okay, never mind. Uh, yes? Uh, so is it also possible to like mo uh, modulate the, for example, delay effects uh, frequency with things like velocity? Like yes, absolutely. You can use the velocity to, for example, yeah, modulate the time of the delay. Oh, wow. Let's make it pretty much small. Now we need feedback, actually, too. I also need to disable the LFO modulation because it maxes things up. We can bypass the modulations. I think the range is a bit too... Too too low. I can see the UI is not super polished yet. Uh, but if I hit harder, you can see the delay set the arts is set to shorter. If I hit softer, it's weird because it r resets to um, to zero when I release the note, so it messes up the effect a bit. Yeah, we can play with that. If I disable the velocity to tracking, it will be easier to hear what the hell is happening. So. 
yeah, we can have fun all day with this delay unit. It's really cool. We also have the ping pong and mono ping pong effects. So that's for some extra stereo thingness. So we also have a distortion unit. <laughs> We're making really crazy sounds here. You know what? I'm going to initialize the patch to make something more predictable. So we have distortion. Pretty straightforward. We have various functions to choose from. And of course, we can modulate this if you want. So now we're making the saw wave, this wonky FM sounding thing, just with the distortion. And the cool thing is also there's a built-in filter. So we can use a pre. Now we're low passing the signal before it hits the distortion, which also can be modulated. Yeah. This would be a miracle in the early 2000s. The dubstep age. <laughs> no, that's fun. It's still really cool. We also have an EQ, which is a free band EQ. By default, these are shelving filters. We can turn them into high pass and low pass filters. And they also can be automated with anything. So you also have a peak filter here. You could use that to you know, get more obnoxious noise and such. Yeah, I'm going to initialize the patch again because we made a mess. There's also an extra filter unit because better testers said that they really would like to have an extra filter after the effect. So we can have the distortion before. Let's ignore that the distortion has a filter in it. Also, we can rearrange the effects. Just drag and drop, and the, the whole thing works backwards. You can also turn things down with the distortion. There's also a flanger, a phaser, and a reverb. I forgot to start my timer. What time it is, Nils? Yes. I'm not sure. We start at 15:14, maybe 15:45. So we are at half time. Awesome. All right. So let's talk about the oscillators. The oscillators are wavetable oscillators. So we can click here and edit them. Um, we can draw here. Uh, we can also draw in the harmonics view. If you want to make a sine wave, you can just clear everything. Right click, clear. Make a sine wave. Just remove the DC offset. And below that, we have a timeline. You see, I can insert a keyframe and add some more harmonics. And we get inter interpolation. So you can have a saw wave that mer morphs into a square wave that morphs into a something else. And right here in the middle, we have the type of blending that is done. Uh, by default, it's spectral blend, so it, uh, it, s it checks what the harmonic content of each keyframe is, and it interpolates that and produces the waveform from the harmonics. But we can go around the other way and use the waveform blend, which then interpolates the shape of the waveform and produces the harmonics from that. So it, it's the other way around. There's also 
to smoothed versions. You can see the harmonic interpolation behaves pretty differently, and we have also this weird jump here. Not sure what that is. Yeah. So we can draw things. And now this is just one source. This is called the wave source. Let's remove that, and we have more sources. We have a line source, for example. And line source is like vector graphics. We have points, we can move them around, and we can animate this. So we can make like you know a perfect pulse pulse width modulation wave table. Which is pretty useful because who doesn't like pulse width modulation? <laughs> Freaking nobody. <laughs> it's the shit. Okay, uh, we can also use audio files as sources. There's an audio file source. We can drag and drop any file here and then scan it. Well, there's some very, very weird use case. Um, if we right click here on the drop down for, for the uh, presets, there's an option text to wavetable. Let's, let's do that. Look what we've got. <laughs> Look what we've got. And now I'm going to add an envelope to this so it will scan the whole wavetable. Let's reset this. And let's make this last, I said, three seconds. Is that enough to say that? Let's play it. <laughs> it's a bit high pitched. Let's go two octaves, three octaves down. Welcome to <laughs> Okay. Welcome to Sonoy Convention. Well, that works. Can scratch with this. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I can right click, learn media assignment, and. <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? Oh, I have to see we have a question. Uh, there will be a part for questions in the end. Sorry? Do you want to hold your question? Because there will be a part for questions near the uh, end. Maybe that's better, yeah. OK. Keep it in mind, then. <laughs> now, what just happened? Well, uh, uh, Vital uses a text-to-speech, uh, some text-to-speech service online, and it just sends the text. We can also set the language. It gets the audio back, and then it uses that as an audio source here and we get you know all this stuff now this waveform doesn't display properly there should be a waveform uh, of this file being being just scanned you know this is what we hear and there are some other options to interpret that for example we can affect the phase of the signal Without that, we can get some clicks because the face is going to not match between the windows. So they're clear. <laughs> Produces a very weird sound of a code. There's also way to blend the <laughs> spectral, spectral content of, the f um, of the each window instead of just uh, the raw samples, etc. We can have this fading between them. There's lots of stuff we can do. And also, like, if you just don't want 
to use the whole thing, so we just want this sonoy. Welcome to... <laughs> I think I changed the blending and I can't understand it anymore. <laughs> Oh, I changed the settings. Oh, yes. All right. So now I have selected this keyframe and I'm setting the position. Now I can set the other keyframe and you can see it's to the right. So now this will scan between the two. Let's see. Ah, good enough. There's also an option to normalize, and this will maximize the volume of each frame. We can make a sick bass out of this. Let's just play around with maybe not too loud. Let's maybe use an LFO to modulate this. Let's add a sub bass oscillator. Make it lower. We can also use frequency modulation, which is really cool because um, you can use a an oscillator to modulate another oscillator, but we can also use the sub oscillator and the sample, the sampler as uh, FM modulation sources or ring modulation too. So I can, for example, FM modulate this with the sub oscillator. Let's disable everything else. Not disable, but make it quiet. <laughs> now I'm doing frequency modulation with this triangle wave on top of the wavetable synthesizer. <laughs> Maybe if I pitch this up, it would be a better result. Uh, pretty ear splitting. Perfect. Which is, of course, possible to modulate this with an LFO. Or we can change this to a sine wave. I think we have too much of this modulation. Yeah, this is brutal. Let's shift it around a bit. Now that's better. But the FM modulation is just one type of modulation. We can have various things happening here. Let's disconnect this. Spectrum is like uh, a high pass filter, a very sharp high pass, low, sorry, low pass filter. And there's other things to squish the sounds. The wave tables. Yeah, that sounds very weird. Like it. Let's add an LFO to it and make it longer. Longer, I said. We can also add the sub bass too. Why not have a notch filter? So, ah, the filters. So we have a few types of filters. The first type is analog. We can, of course, have 12 and 24 decibels, but there's also some weird things like notch blend. We blend from high pass to notch to low pass. Sounds pretty cool. There's also notch spread, which goes from band pass to two notches to one notch. There's also band pass peak notch, so. I think the peak sounds the best on this. Oh, nice. Let's add another photo to that. Also, the LFOs, hmm, 
You can do anything with them. There's also a alternative mode with, of a different type of interpolation between the points. And this way we can go from, we can also paint with different different shapes enough. We can use this as a step sequencer. We can have, you know, like up to 32 steps and just make like sample and hold noise. It sounds like it's speaking to us. Speaking of speaking, there is formant filters too. I think I'm going to disable this oscillator and go for a simple saw wave. It's going to be easier to hear the filters. That's one performance filter. There's an alternative one. There's a lot of fun with these. I'm going to go back to the analog filter and disable the LFO and just use a simple Now I like this because there's many different types of filters which differ in sound. You can also distort this filter itself. Which gives pretty fat sound. Most of the filters also self oscillate. Yes. You can have lots of it. That's not even the maximum. <coughs> Yay. We have many different types of filters. I believe this is a, a MOG filter. I also like to add some noise to such sounds to make them sound even more analog and warm. And now we can use the stereo modulation to, for example, vary the, the filter cutoff. I can't really tell right now, but it should be audible. In the stream, probably it's the best. <laughs> All right. Well, there's even more things we can do with the oscillators. There's modifiers. We can phase the sh shift to the phase for harmonics separately. There's a lot of things. Now, playing with phase is very cool because if we distort the thing, it's really changing the character of the sound. There's many more things we can do. There's even a Frequency filter in here, we can like low pass our wave table directly inside of this. Let me do that for a while. So we can, for example, do a filter sweep in our wave table. So there's many things to remove harmonics from our signal in the wavetable, here with the spectrum uh, distortion type, with the filters, and with the effects. We have also the advanced tab. <laughs> 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 I should have said, but wait, there's more! <laughs> there's even more, yes. By default, the oscillators have random phase. We can disable that which is pretty important for uh, unison. If I go back to the voice tab, we can enable unison. Now I disabled the random phase, so all of the voices start in sync, and, they, and then they drift apart. 
but I can make this voice, uh, the face completely random, which gives us a bit more expected result, I would say. I think the compressor really helps with the things. A bit loud. I think I'm going to show you some patches that I made before, because there's more information and more ideas to make sounds. For example, we have a combo filter. Let me show you this. You see, I'm not using any oscillators. I'm using filters. So how this works is we have this noise source, which is, you can see the amplitude is, we're just producing a very short, uh, let's, let's disable the filters too, with the effects to make it, break it down. So I'm creating a very short spike of noise, a very short burst. And that is meant to simulate when you pluck a string. You just create a wide band energy pulse. And I then route it to the filter too to just remove some of the harmonics, make it a little bit more toned down. And then I send this to the filter one, which is using a comp filter. And the comp filter has key tracking enabled now I disabled it, no matter what key I press, it's going to sound the same. But if I enable the key tracking, it, it plays the pitch that I press on my keyboard. There are two types of the comp filters. A comp filter is, in a sense, a delay line with a, a feedback delay line. It's just delaying the signal, but because it's implemented as a filter, we can precisely tune the comp filter, like define the delay in hertz rather than in milliseconds, which makes it usable for musical purposes because we can have stuff like that. And we can just, you know, produce some signals or do weird things with this uh, input impulse. And this is basically physical modeling. It's pretty fun. I've also made a different patch for using filters, I'm sorry, so this is using two resonant bypass filters, bandpass filters, sorry, on the noise source, let me mute all of that. So I'm just feeding noise, which simulates the air going through the pipe organ. And then the pipes resonate. And I use an envelope to make the resonance go up in time. So that the resonance is building up. So that gives a little bit of a <gasps> before the note, which sounds pretty tactile. I don't know about you, but to me this sounds like a real thing. Yeah, I think something like that could be done. It's weird when you do a, a distortion on that. It kind of tunes down, which is funny. <laughs> Interesting. I also enabled a second filter, which is like a second set of pipes. And when I use the macro, I use I use the modulation matrix to 
set precise value so I can tune the second set to the first one. I'm going to show you this because it's actually a pretty cool feature. So you've seen that the envelopes, sorry, that the LFOs can do everything, but also we have such a function here. And you see the macro here has a function defined. So this position gives me an octave and some other intervals. Beautiful. And unison. Fun stuff. You can also make drums with this, of course. Mm, this uses a single sine wave oscillator with a fixed phase, which is a bit offset to give it a click. And then also a noise source with a filter. And then it's distorted, compressed, and EQ'd in the end. And it's pretty freaking kick-ass. You can also make snares. There's your typical EDM snare. You're going to hear it in action later. I also made this patch to play around with ambient sounds. There's a lot of things happening here. We have two wave table oscillators scanning along with different speeds with some distortion functions here being applied. Here's a bend function, here's a FM modulation with the sub oscillator and two filters going on. Got some noise. Adding a chorus and here's a comp filter also modulated with some weird LFOs. And you can see we have eight LFOs active here. With some weird functions slowly scanning through to create something that is feels random. So I'm using second values, which are very strange and low, like, or slow, like 45 seconds here, five seconds here. I can go on and on. And we're using... Yeah, I have five minutes left. <laughs> it just made me look at the clock. <laughs> Uh, I'm using 32 modulation slots, so I asked Matt if he can add more, because I run out of them. <laughs> and he said, hmm, maybe. <laughs> oh, there's many more. But you know what? I want to show you some other stuff, because that was all using like the single uh, synthesizer. But I'm going to show you some music. Yay! Yay! Music! Music! I think I need to... Oh yeah, here it is. Okay. You're probably gonna recognize this. Oh, wait a second. I have X runs. That is no good. What, are, what you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to increase the jack buffer size. It's going to be good. So this is all vital. You can see in the mixer there is only vital plugin inserted, nothing else. The only other plugin is the limiter. So there are drums synthesized. Base. There's a pad. And this lead, which is the 
tuning itself so it sounds like a like an old analog synth. That was the goal with this. And I will fade out the piece. Thank you. There is actually more. <laughs> so, someone mentioned drum and bass. Can I play one more track? I couldn't play this on my laptop, so I made a screencast and recorded it. Oh, but of course, MPV doesn't play sound. Give me VLC. You might have heard this on my SoundCloud. So this is all made with Vital, but also some other open source effect plugins. I'm not gonna play the whole track because it's too long. You can see there's lots of automation happening. So if you want to hear the whole thing, you can just go to my SoundCloud or YouTube because I uploaded it recently as a, like a, a demo of what Vital can do when you sit down and make a proper track. All right, yeah, I'm all over time. Yes. So I, I actually got two questions which are related. Uh, can you use effect plugins in Vital, so external effect plugins perhaps in Vital, in the chain of, of uh, Vital uh, effects? No, no, it's not a, it's not a host for other, other effects. Ju just assuming there are some effects which Vital cannot do, but from what I saw, that's probably yeah. not ve very relevant. The other thing would be, can I use Vital as an effect plugin for another synth by, by uh, you, uh, sending the audio of an, uh, the output of another uh, synthesizer plugin into Vital to then use all the LFOs and effects and all the stuff. Yes, there is uh, right now there's an, uh, a second plugin called Vital FX, which just gets the audio, processes it through the effects. It also gets MIDI, and I think like you can trigger envelopes and LFOs with the MIDI input, but it doesn't have the oscillators or or the filters, the main filters, just the effect stack. So you can use it to, to process other sounds. Sounds great. Thanks. So you could like play a guitar and root it to, to your, make it your effects paddle, basically. <laughs> yes? Yeah, I have a question from IRC. Yay! Um, um, what's his name? Uh, Audio Frankie uh, asked if, uh, if it's going to be multi timbral or you just supposed, like you did just did, to have multiple instances. I don't think it's going to be multi-timbral, because mm. there's quite a lot of things happening al already in the one instance. So, mm. no, I don't think so. It's, I think it's going to be like single voice or single instrument in, in one instance. Okay, and I have a remark. Uh, you should name your uh, uh, pipe organ preset Vital Organ. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I actually... <laughs> Speaking of presets... Um, there was one called Brain Damage. Oh, what yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, there was. <laughs> Why is that? Um, let's, let's, let's just see. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't hear it. <laughs> it's testing how much Vital can take. Everything is happening here. All the envelopes, all the LFOs, all the effects. Oh, wait. This is muted. 
All the modulation sources. You can make very weird and complex sounds with it. It's fun. Or very simple and effective ones, too. Um, two questions. Uh, one, how CPU hungry is it? I think it's not that CPU hungry, actually. Uh, I didn't have much trouble um, using it. Like My experience so far was that it's pretty well behaved. Uh, there is oversampling. By default, it's two times oversampled. Oh, yeah, sure. Also, you didn't see the patch, probably. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. So by default, it's two times oversampling. And you can drop it down to one, but then you can hear some aliasing, especially with distortion. But you can also bump it up to four times and eight times oversampling. I tried that. I never had like it bog down my CPU. But again, I tested it on a 16-thread six, CPU mostly, and later on this laptop. So uh, I think it's pretty well optimized. But that's probably going to go up later because you know once once the whole design is finished, then Matt is going to probably optimize it to maximum. Okay. I see a question there too. Uh, I had a second one. Um, oh. In the first song you played, uh, I'm pretty certain I heard a cowbell. <laughs> Could you please find that patch and show? <laughs> Can oh. we hear it? <laughs> um, I think I think it was. Oh, it was in this this track. <laughs> this one. Do you mean this this sound? Is it that? Ah, uh, yeah, it could be because, well, snap. Is it that sound? Is, this, is, this is the one you, you meant, bent? Maybe. Maybe, okay. Let's see if how it's made. Well, I used two oscillators, and I just generated random harmonics and phases for them, and then ring modulated them against the sub oscillator and set their pitches to different ones so that it's like in harmonic and uh, added some extra noise and used it to disease filters too to oh no that's brain damage ah. <laughs> the filters also increase resonance with the envelope to get more clang and there's also a lot of effects, delay, reverb, compressor and EQ to just get rid of the low end. I didn't even try, try all these notes, they sound fine. Nice. I'm going to submit all these patches to Matt, actually. Uh, so hopefully some of that will end up in the final release. I need to call this one Vital Organ, yeah, for sure. <laughs> that was great. Very quick one. Um, you mentioned cross-platform capabilities for this guy. Um, I have noticed, taking a look at the UI, it looks already pretty touch-friendly. So any plans in the direction for mobile USs? I have no idea, honestly, if there's any plans for uh, mobile devices like Android or uh, iOS devices. Um, Matt didn't mention this uh, anywhere, but... Um, I don't know, maybe it's a hint, maybe maybe that's an idea. So I guess he has pretty lots of work to, you know, work on this. But if the UI is really touch friendly, well, then it's not shouldn't be that much work, right? I've got no idea, but it could be a really good one. Yes? Uh, is it possible to load an arbitrary wave file and then slice it and slice it and then use it as a base for the wave table? Yes. Let's do that. I've recorded something. Ah, that's brain damage. Let's let's remove the brain damage and start over. <laughs> Lol. This always gets me. Summary 2019. <laughs> yeah, so oh now we can you can see the waveform is displayed correctly. Uh, we can change this to vocode. Summary 2019. And this is my voice recorded. I can just play the file. <laughs> <laughs> 
if if nothing breaks because you know things break. Oh no, MPV doesn't do that. Ah, uh, never mind. <laughs> VLC or other city. <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's try Audacity. <laughs> okay, no. Sonoy 2019. So that's the sample I recorded, and we slice it as as a wavetable. We can also load it. <laughs> we can also load it into the sampler and just play it. Sonoy 2019. Of course, but we can use also this to like modulate an oscillator. For example, let's make this a sine wave. And sine wave ish and FM Sonoy two thousand Sonoy two thousand nineteen Sonoy Sonoy two thousand nineteen. Well, that's robotic. Yeah, we can do weird stuff with wave files. Any more questions? Okay. Ooh, I think we are not as badly over time as I thought. <laughs> Wait, you planned for this? <laughs> no way. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, you can get more of my stuff. You can get more of vital stuff. Um, get the handles. Uh, I'm super excited for the synth. Let's just wait and see when it's released, <laughs> I guess. <laughs>